Well, hi guys, welcome back to MK Sports, guys. You're wondering why there's an echo and a bit of room here. Well, this morning we had the enviable task of loading a 40 foot container that is going out to our dealer in the USA with seven kits. So let's roll over and see how they got on, and then we'll crack on in here in the workshop. Right, well that was fun, loading the container. We've got a 40 foot container full of cars. Going out to James Shaw there, a Louisiana dealer in the US of A. So if you're looking for a kit in America and you're thinking, oh, I really want one of those. Well, they're coming at you. <laughs> flexing of loading we get into here what we've done with uh, Nick's car here lots of niggly little issues uh, stuff prepping for MOT had to be electrical glimmer so here the uh, electric reverse wasn't working and uh, we fixed that now there's a couple of issues it was the mounting of it they'd, it's hard to show you but they twisted the motor when they mounted it so it was wedging so the solenoid couldn't fire a little bit of twist in it and also the cable that runs from here to up here was so thin wall uh, cable it was just not man enough to power it to power the start motor. so we had to put a new cable in uh, we had to do a hazard switch because needed that for IVA which is now operational flashing on here which is good the indicator still was loose uh, the steering alignment was out and a few other little little jobs which was the gear lever uh, we had to shorten the throw on this because this is binding up and we had to adjust the bracketry here and I'll show you under here Cables can work okay. We've stopped using them quite a few years ago now. And uh, it's got enough bonnet catches on this one. It was never coming off. There's six bonnet catches. <laughs> that ain't never coming off, is it? So under here, we had the same issue. What it was was on here, we had to shorten it down on the mechanism and adjust this bracket here to shorten the throw. The throw was so long, it was actually pushing this part, more or less, out of the cable. 
uh, on the inner and outer shroud here and then it was just getting bound up and, and getting stuck basically because you had such a long throw. Now you've got probably 40 maybe 40 mil throw tops sort of thing on the whole thing from start to finish and it goes through gears really really nicely. A um, few other little niggly jobs to get it, it's all MOT'd now so he wants to be able to enjoy it and have some fun down in the A and B road so he'll be collecting that shortly, get that out. Nice little car, 5EY engine here. These rev, oh, they're like, what are they, 13, 14, 13, 14,000 I think they go up to. Lovely little engines, um, really, really good. And they work well on track as well. They can, um, just a baffle plate and them really. And uh, make sure you do a breather mod because um, they do suffer with it, with pressure in the engine if you don't do a breather mod. Sometimes we've come out here, but you've got to make sure you breathe. There's a little, you drill a hole inside here. I think there's a video we've done before. You drill a hole in here take the pair valves out so this really does breathe into a catch tank. In fairness, that catch tank, if you was going on track, you'd probably want a bigger catch tank than that. So you'd have three places, one, two, and the third place here on the uh, on the, on the crankcase down in there. You'd need to breathe out of all of those, otherwise they build up pressure and the engines do not like it. They end up escaping metal bits, which is never a good sign. So yeah, that'd be nice get this going and uh, rock and rolling. Right, while we're here up on the ramp, we've got the S2000 car, if you're looking for a car for sale, that's currently available, uh, built by us a couple of years ago, just, it's been with the customer now, and they've been happy with it, but where they're out, they were located to Germany, they were in the armed forces, it's come back here because can't get it registered in Germany, and uh, it's up for sale, we're just under here, we thought we'd show you under here, all the engine gear, it's all floor pan, it's all clean and tidy under here, done, we've got Sierra Diff, our billet upright, CXR, it's all nice and tidy under here, ready to go, fuel fit or fuel pumps into our fuel tank. So it's a couple of years old this car, so you expect a little bit of wear and tear here and there, but generally it's pretty good, we thought we'd do a final inspection of it. Um, yeah, it's looking pretty good under here, and then uh, that's the final bits on this car done, really, so it's ready for this new owner. And if you'd like to be that new owner, what do you do? Yes, you hook us up a phone call, email, come and see us at the factory, if we'd like to get you in that seat, have a little test drive. Right, tucked away here is a Westfield V8 that came in. Um, we had to move it over here just while we were loading and unloading, but what does it come in for? I can hear you asking. Well, it broke down on the customer, wouldn't start, wouldn't run. Let's move this out of the way there for you, Louis, so we can see what the issue was. Well, so after lots of investigation, not huge amounts, but um, wouldn't start, backfired, broke down on him. The AM man said, oh, he thinks it's the points shows how good the AI are people are. And they say you can plug it in this day, they can't diagnose stuff because this thing doesn't have points, it's got electronic ignition. So, which you can tell from up here, it says it all on it. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, a, a day of the age where everything, unless you can plug it in, when OBD port in your computer tells you, they don't dive in and know what's going on. So what was the process? Well, we had spark and we had fuel and we had air. Now an engine should normally run <laughs> if you've got those three things, <laughs> in, in my opinion anyway. Um, so after digging around, we thought, oh, perhaps the rotor's knackered. Cleaned all that, chunned it out, we was gonna clean it up, ready it on, but we had good spark, so it couldn't have been that. Ignition leaves were fine. Thought we'd check in there, we took the rocker covers off, make sure everything's turning, everything's turning under there. And then we started fishing around and we found the problem in the end, and this is the problem. Now this dizzy, uh, distributor goes down and it connects up to the cam gear at the end it's got some teeth on it that drives that and drives the oil pump as well now normally this would rotate in a nice smooth pattern going around firing in each of these eight cylinders on this one nice and smooth it is not however meant to do this by hand <laughs> because the teeth are missing down there in one part of it let's move that out of the way that is doing that that is what's happening is, and I'll show you. And we'll diagnose that and we'll just uh, clank this up. If I give it a little bump now, and you'll see, now it's locked. Get a little shock there from where we're trying to do it. Um, yeah, now it's locked. And then if I rotate it a couple of times, it's missing the teeth. So the unfortunate news with this is that cam and the gear and everything else has got to come out. Got to take all this off, the water pump, the cam's got to come off the front, we've got to have a new pump, possibly a new dizzy to go on there as well to make that all operational because it was rotating and as soon as you rotate it was stopping and then going around again, then stopping and going again. So it just backfired all the time, basically what the problem is. So a little bit of diagnosing, but yes, yeah, nice little Rover V8 in there. Um, 
probably make good power with with the carb and everything on it. So they don't make huge power. They make reasonable power. They don't make huge power. Um, so I think they only stock the 3.5s, like 150, 180 horsepower. Not massive, but loads of torque. So it should be good fun. But we get that out, and uh, that's going to have to go off to someone. It's not something we would probably do here. We'll so talk to a couple of specialists about that and get that uh, get that buttoned up for him and. Uh, live another day it's a bit more involved diving in there with a v8 because i always wonder if it's missing metal where's that metal gone so there's a bit more into it than that one so we'll now we diagnose at least we can just help solve the problem right cup 200 time now if you're not following us uh, the, with the cup 200 championship you're welcome to it's uh, with the 750 motor club we was actually at anglesey recently if you haven't seen that and you want to see these cars going around and what they can perform like Last week, I think we did a video on Wednesday, and that's up there now, and you can see the guys, John and uh, Al Bolton and John and Mike and Alero and all, all the guys there. Had a fantastic race, great weekend. Uh, and then we next outing will be Snetterton, actually. In this. So this car was a cup car. We've gone from race car to road car. We're converting it over. Lots of work been done. Wiring has been the main principle behind it now. Um, this is all sort of been wired now because we've converted it back to a road loom, so we've had to make a new road loom, so DigiDash is all in, and also got the free wheel on here, so all the indicators work from there, got high beam working on there, horn, and a few other bits that work on that, which is cool, and everything else is on the switches here, so you've got hazards, which have to be, hazards have to be wired, so even if I kill this, the battery kill switch, they have to work with the battery kill switch killed. So you can see that on there, that's still working for IVA spec. All the wiring is done. We put the switch gear into IVA compliancy. So anything from here, 127 mil, has to have a radius of 2.5 mil. So that's why these half moons are in there to protect the switches. And we've just got to put a shroud, which we do for this, around the dashboard as well to make sure that's all good. But the wiring is all done. Um, next thing, this is going to go off to our partners at RLM Racing because it's had the ATs on it. 80 foot bodies, the billet ones, which are nice, great, really, really good, make plenty of power, makes a 206 horsepower, but it's going to have one better. It's going to have a full flat shifter and drive by wire. And RLM, who support us with the championship, will be fitting that, installing it, and give it a dyno, make sure she's got the good health. And that will give you also flat shift up and flat shift down on both of it as well. So we'll have a little motor that will go in here and it will all be collected up electronically. In theory, I suppose you could do cruise control and things like that as well. And all the other things you can have program the ECU then to give you a faster idle for warm up and everything else. You can change all the mapping. It's so much easier to control than with just a throttle cable. So yeah, that's the next final job really is to get that up to them, which will be in the next week. Get them on the dyno, get that all done. And uh, yeah, be rocking and rolling with another Cup 200 car out there ready to go and hit the track. Right, while we're on topic of booster cars and Cup 200 cars, we had the Sport 200, the black with the gold wheels, which is hashtag Peter's car, up at RLM also this week, uh, on its dyno. So uh, we'd have a bit over there, a little short snippet of that and see what she made. It made 206 horsepower, which is the norm, what we'd expect to see out of them. And uh, that's on uh, standard foot bodies, Life ECU and, and uh, our loom and uh, all of the other processes that go through it there as well. So, uh, yeah, just show you a quick snippet of that on the dyno at RLM. Right, let's talk about some of the events that are coming up. Well, we've got the Cup 200 Championship at Snetterdon. That's in the first weekend of August. I think it's the 3rd and 4th of August down there. If you're, if you're local and you feel like coming out and supporting us, it'd be great to see you down there at Snetterdon on the Saturday or the Sunday. I think it's one race on the Saturday, two races on the Sunday. 
might be a mixed bag or whatever, so it could be a good, good bit of fun. Um, if you want to get on track yourself, if you think, you know, oh, I want to do some of that, well, complete kit car track day, uh, that's at Blighton Park on the 1st of September. That is a Sunday, there is still some spaces available for that. So if you want to get interested, you can jump onto the website, we'll probably hook up a link. Can we get a link up there, Lewis? Yes, we can, we can get a link up there and you can uh, jump onto that. We'll be attending, we'll have at least two, maybe three cars there ourselves as well, and it's got always at least 30, 40, maybe even 50 cars. I think there's 50 spaces in total, at least 30 or 40 cars out there. It's really good, great fun day. We've been doing it for the last three or four years. It always had an awesome day out there. So yeah, support the Click Kit Complete. And there, the words are not gonna come out today. The Complete Kit Car Magazine, uh, track day at Blighton Park. That's on that 1st of September. Right, that's it for this week, guys. If you wanna get your backside into one of these awesome sports cars, you know what to do. Hook us up, phone call, email, come and see us at the factory. And we look forward to seeing you. That's it for this week, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Catch you next week.